Hi guys, welcome back. This is Mike Rimmis at MH Tutorials and today we're going to do a tutorial on how to tear a piece of cloth. So rip and tear a piece of cloth. All right. So let's get started. First of all, we need to create an object to tear up. All right. So we're going to take a polygon plane and we're going to drag that out to basically the size and uh, shape of a flag, something like that. Okay. Now, don't worry, we're not going to uh, tear up a country flag. That would be disrespectful. We're going to use a pirate flag. Okay. We're going to hit five for shaded mode. And we need to add some subdivision to this. Okay. So we're going to go to polyplane. Let's increase our subdivisions to, let's say, 30 by 30. And that's really important because that will allow the end cloth to bend, fold, and so forth. So we got that. Then we're going to apply the flag to it. So select it, right click, assign new material, Lambert. Next to our color slider here, we're going to hit the checkered box. We're going to select file. And in my folder, I'm going to pick up a file that I found, which is this pirate flag and hit open. So what do we just do? Check our checkered uh, sphere here. Okay. So it's applied, but it's obviously not in the right position. So we're going to select that. We're going to go to our polygon menu, go to create UVs and select planar mapping. Now that's a bit better, but as you can see, it still needs to be rotated. So next we're going to go to edit UVs, UV texture editor, like so. Right click, UVs, drag select the entire thing. Hit E to rotate until we get that. Okay, cool. So that's our flag. We're going to right click and go to object mode. We're going to select that guy. We're going to hit E and we're going to rotate that up by 90 degrees like so. Okay, we're going to turn off our grid. So display and deselect grid. Okay, so that's our flag. All right. Now, first we need to create an end cloth object. So we're going to select our object. We're going to go to end dynamics. We're going to go up to end mesh and create end cloth like so. All right. Okay, so uh, how do we know that this is now an end cloth object? Now, first of all, down here it says result end cloth shape one. But also, if we increase our animation uh, count and we hit play, it's going to fall straight down. And there we go. And that's how we can see that it's a proper end cloth object. Okay, cool. So, what's next? What we're going to do is we're going to select this and I'm going to switch to my front view here and we're going to right click. We're going to go to vertex. I'm going to drag select these vertices. I'm going to go up to end constraint and transform. So that's not going anywhere. All right. And I'll show you. We're going to go back to frame one, hit play. And as you can see, it's reacting nicely the way it should. Okay. Stop. Go back to frame one. Now we want this to tear up. Okay. So next what we're going to do, we're going to select our object again. Going to switch back to this view again. And we're going to select the other side. Right click, vertex, drag select this entire row here. Go to end constraint and transform. And we're at frame one. We're going to hit S to keyframe that. So just select that, hit S and there you go. There's your keyframe on frame one. All right. Now, in order to tear this, I want this row here to move to the right and this row to stay where it is. Okay. And that should give the effect of the object being torn. Okay. So for that, I want this to happen within, let's say, 50, well, maybe 60 frames. So I'm going to move to frame 60 like that. I'm going to um, go to dynamic constraint two. 
and this has currently an X position of 11.317, right? On frame 60, I want that to increase to a, transform, a translate value of 25, like that. And I'm gonna right click on it and set key. And now I've got a key set on 60, okay? We're gonna go back to frame one. I'm gonna go back to this view here. Now the thing is, if I play out this simulation or animation, whatever you wanna call it, uh, it's gonna stretch out the flag. It's not gonna tear. The reason is we need to tell we need to tell the system that this is a terrible object. Okay, not a terrible, a terrible. Okay, so we're going to select a region in the middle of the flag where we are going to let's say weaken the fabric. All right. So how do we do that? We're going to go to our lasso select or lasso select, whatever it's called. We're going to select that. Actually, make sure that we're on vertex first. Just like that. And we're just gonna left click and drag down here to kind of define a region where we feel that it's okay to tear that up and release, okay? Make sure that you got all the vertices so there is a definite line down here. So we've got that selected. And while that's selected, we're going to go up to End Constraint and select a terrible surface, like that. Okay. Now let's position this for our animation, our simulation. Red frame one. And if I didn't forget anything, this should work. Okay. So it's going to move that way, and so I'm going to move a little bit this direction. And let's hit play. There we go. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty straight line. It's pretty straight down. So what we can do is we're going to go back. We're going to hit Control Z. There we go. And let's see if our animation is still OK. Now it's stretching. There we go. Cool. And we're going to redefine that region. So I'm going to right click, go to Vertex again. Take my lasso, and I'm just going to create somewhat of a bigger region, like that. OK. Go up and constrain. Terrible surface. Let's see if we get a slightly different effect this time. And hit play. OK, much cooler. All right. So that's all there's to it. Nice and easy. So you can just see what happens here. Okay. We can scrub up, scrub down. It's pulling and it's tearing and it's falling apart. Now, based on the uh, number of subdivisions here, you will get a, a more detailed tear. And what you can also do is, in this case, we're using quads, right? but you can also use triangles, which will give a little bit different pattern depending on how you're modeling. So we'll just uh, do that once more. There we go. And that's how you do that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.